प्योता प्रवेश मम वाच विमा प्रसुप्ता संजीवय तकिल शक्तिधरा स्वधाना अन्या सहस्रचरणा श्रवणावी प्राण नमो भगवते पुषा सुभ्यम कथाचना स्मृते यस्म दुस्क सुक भवि विस्मृते विपरीत सी चैतन्य नमा कृष्ण का भी नहीं या प्लीज सो इज अ रीजन बाय दिस आई वॉज थिंकिंग दिस चेस ऑल्सो कुड बी ऑक्यूपाइड फ्रेंड यू नो सो दैट आप पीछे जाते तो फिर थोड़ा वो लगता है मैं आ गया स्टार्ट विद द सुगर शाकेट कुंती स्प्रेयर्स एंड वी हैव कंप्लीटेड वर्स नंबर वन एंड टू एनीबडी हैज मेमोराइज वर्स नंबर वन मेमोराइज वुड यू लाइक टू लीड अस इन द यस यू कैन ट्राई वी लाइक टू फर्स्ट कुंती वाच कुंती वाच नमस्ते पुरुषम द्वाद्यम ईश्वर प्रकृते परम अलक्ष्यम सर्वभूता अंतर्बिवस्थित सेकेंड वर्ष माया जवनी नटो नाट्यादरोता एक्सलेंट हरि वो वो तो माता जी अमेजिंग सो यू आर यू आर मेमोराइज द फर्स्ट टू वर्सेस वेरी गुड so we the what is the meaning of the first verse what is kunti devi saying in that verse she is paying her obeisances to the she is offering obeisances yeah. to the lord and what is she saying you are param ishwar you are not ordinary ishwar you are not ordinary you are the original purusha you are what is you cannot be seen by you cannot be seen alaksham sarva bhutana why you cannot be seen What is the last line of the verse? Say, he is present in both. He is both inside and outside of all living entities. And what is the second verse translation? What is Kunti Devi saying in the second shloka? Krishna is covered by the curtain, curtain of Maya. Maya, Maya, jab ni kaachan na. Because of that, agya, foolish, ignorant people cannot see Krishna. And then what else? Like the actor cannot be seen when he is performing. His real identity is not revealed when he is expertly acting. And the last class we discussed in detail about how when Bharatanatyam is performed or some uh, dance is performed, many people don't understand what is happening. They need to know the concept. They need to know the pastimes. So this is the way we were discussing. So we will continue the discussion from the second verse. So Kunti Devi is saying she is calling the people who don't understand Krishna as Buddha. Buddha. माया जवनी काचन न मध्यादोक्षज माध्यम न लक्ष्य से मूढ़ दृशा न लक्ष्य से आपको कौन नहीं देख सकता है मूढ़ मूढ़ मीन्स फूलिश पीपल दे डोंट अंडरस्टैंड वाई दे डोंट अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज शिला प्रभुपाद राइट इन दर्पूर थ्री रीजन फर्स्ट इज दे है पुअर फंड ऑफ नॉलेज जस्ट लाइक आपका बैंक में फंड होता है यू पुट मनी देर इज अ डेपोजिट सो शिला प्रभुपाद वुड से सिमिलरली पीपल दे हैव अ पुअर फंड ऑफ नॉलेज नॉलेज का जो फंड है वो बहुत कम है दिस इज अ वे कृष्णा शिला प्रोपा डिक्लेयर वाई पीपल डोट अंडरस्टैंड इज बिकॉज ऑफ पुअर फंड ऑफ नॉलेज एंड सेकेंड रीजन इज 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 बिकॉज दे हैव स्टबर्न ऑप्शनिसी जिद्दी है एकदम बिकॉज ऑफ दैट दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड कृष्ण एंड थर्ड इज इज बिकॉज ऑफ वेरियस मिसडीड इन द पास्ट 
That's why they don't understand. And they will accept only Pratyaksha Pramana and Anumana Pramana. Those of you who have studied the JOSD course, you must be knowing that Pratyaksha Pramana means understanding the truth by perceiving it through the senses. Eyes. What can be perceived by the senses, only that they accept. That is called Pratyaksha Pramana. And some people, they accept only Anumana Pramana, which means they will hypothesize, they will speculate. That is the only truth, that is the only way they understand and accept. And to understand Krishna, we have to accept not Pratyaksha Pramana or Anumana Pramana. We have to accept Shabda Pramana. We have to hear submissively from a higher authority. And they don't accept Shabda Pramana. Why? Because they don't have faith. So now they don't have faith. So now they, they need to get Krishna consciousness. They need to understand Krishna. So who is responsible for these people not having faith in Krishna? Who is responsible for people not accepting Krishna? Huh? Yes, why we are responsible? Not faith. Because none of us went and preached to them. That is why they are not devotees. This is the this is the right way of understanding. So when Krishna says muda, when Krishna says those who are not accepted Krishna, they are muda, foolish. Srila Prabhupada would also translate this word as rascal many times. Basically, uh, the word is used in the sense they are unfortunate. Those who don't accept Krishna. They are called in the scriptures as unfortunate. So, whenever you see foolish, ignorant, rascal, these words are used for as a translation for the word Buddha. It is used in the sense that they are unfortunate. They are not got Krishna consciousness. Nobody has gone and told them about Krishna. Like that. So, the logic, see, the logic is like this. To know Krishna, to understand Krishna, we need to have what? To know Krishna properly. What is the quality that we need to have? What is that thing called that we have in our heart by which we can know Krishna? Faith, 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 faith and that. Faith. Basically, we need to have bhakti. See, ultimately, bhakti se am bhagwan ko samaj sakte. Now, because Krishna says in the Gita, bhaktya maam abhijanati yava nishchasmi tatpata Only a devotee can understand. When Kunti Devi is saying, Polish people don't understand you. So if Krishna has to be understood, then Krishna has declared in the Gita, only Bhakti, by Bhakti we can understand Krishna. So now the question is, if one doesn't know Krishna, what it means is basically, one has not understood Krishna means he doesn't have Bhakti. That is a simple logic. So Polish people, ignorant people, Unfortunate people who don't know Krishna, they don't know Krishna because they don't have bhakti. Right? So far, you are there. Because Krishna said in the Gita that they don't, only those who have bhakti can know him. Now, the question arises, how can one get bhakti? Because only bhakti will understand Krishna, no? So how does a person get bhakti, devotional service? How can... Uh, one get bhakti. Yes, if a devotee gives you bhakti, then you can get bhakti. You can't get, you can't say, I know I did a lot of punya last life. Bhakti is not dependent on punya. Bhakti is different logic. So, if a person is an atheist in this world, you can't hold him responsible for being an atheist. See, he is an atheist because you have still not gone to him and preach. We have to preach. Now, I know some questions are coming in your mind. <laughs> I can guess what those questions are. Oh, hey, he is not responsible. He is doing so many simple activities. I am not saying he is not responsible for that. For his karma, he is responsible. See, the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and Balte Vidya Bhushan, when they translate the word Muda, they translate the word Muda as unfortunate. 
and later on when the word mahatma is used in the gita they translate mahatma as fortunate so therefore mahatma is fortunate muda is unfortunate unfortunate means what unfortunate means is unfortunate you can't hold him responsible vichara and durbhagya shali hai so then who is responsible we are responsible we have to teach we have to give them joy as the course now you will say acha that means he's not responsible at all no we are not saying that whatever material activities he performs he is responsible for it and he will get reactions he will get rewards for his material activities he is responsible for all the actions he performs but for not liking krishna he is not responsible sometimes they don't reach out sometimes like they attend class also but they they have been uh, even so much of food from child like i if somebody join i don't know but from childhood they have been given this thing that krishna is like you know suddenly would have reached so though, though they have attended the classes and they are not able to accept it so for that so then they are envious of krishna so they have to be approached by somebody who is in who is a jain see the point is uh, it is see it's like this okay i'll come to that point i'll come to your point about by many people you know like you can't preach to if i go to tamil nadu and i start speaking in hindi i will be driven out so yeah. abhi tamil wale ko preach karna hai to tamil mein kya ke preach karna chahiye so the point is our strategy is not proper see we we i complete my flow of thought i have a certain flow of thought and then maybe we'll take questions on because i am interesting there so see when when a person is uh, not liking krishna he is not responsible let me complete this thought because he doesn't know about krishna similarly if a person likes krishna then that is also not because of him see when you get bhakti it is not your credit it is a credit of the devotee has given you similarly you should take the blame also if somebody is not having bhakti then you should take the blame you can't say arun jain would manta me value it then that way we are not going to please them so in that mood i am saying that we should reach out to people it is our responsibility so if you are a devotee you should know that you are a devotee not because of you because of some devotees who are priest to the atheistic persons these people who do wrong things they are all responsible for their karma but you can't say that oh he is not in bhakti because of his bad karma or he is in not in bhakti he is in bhakti because of his good karma then that is wrong because bhakti doesn't work like that bhakti is beyond karma The definition of bhakti is that bhakti you get not by good karma, bhakti you get by mercy, by grace. <clears throat> so therefore, a person may do lot of good karma, but he will not become a devotee unless he has got blessings and if a devotee has entered his life. So therefore, Krishna consciousness is beyond karma. This is the philosophical understanding. so it is a devotee's responsibility to give krishna consciousness so therefore when whenever scriptures use seemingly harsh words like mooda rascal it is in the sense of compassion it is in the sense of are yaar bechara usko unfortunate usko devotee banao in that mood the appeal is made to devotees in that mood it is said that is a rascal is a foolish fellow make him a devotee so as vaishnavas whenever we hear the word mudha in bhagavatam prayers it is that that person is unfortunate and he has to be made a devotee so we have to facilitate the experience of krishna if somebody is not experiencing krishna it is because of us if you say no it is dependent it is it is his responsibility because of which he is not a devotee that means uh, see we have to be under, we have to understand that someone has accepted krishna consciousness we can't use the logic that okay he is not accepted krishna consciousness because you know he is very poor or his material situation is bad like that if you use that logic then it is like saying 
that if somebody has accepted Krishna consciousness, it is because he is materially comfortable. Because then Bhakti's definition is violated. And you know, Bhakti is not dependent. Ahetuki aprati atta. Bhagavatam 1.2.6 we studied. So material situation is not the cause of Bhakti. Bhakti is caused by Bhakta. Bhakta, Bhagavan and Bhakti. These three are the, these three are independent. So how can there be material cause for Bhakti? According to scriptures, material situation is not the cause of Bhakti. So if somebody is unfortunate, we should take responsibility as being practicing devotees. So we have to give Krishna consciousness to unfortunate people and make them fortunate. Not that, oh, they are all Buddha, they are foolish people, they cannot understand Krishna. I am in Krishna consciousness. So we are not better than them because we are devotees. We are simply more fortunate than them because we are devotees. And we have to make them also fortunate. And then once they also become devotees, they become better devotees than us also. So at the same time, like what Mataji said about some certain people who are envious of Krishna or who have been brainwashed since childhood. Hmm? So such people we have to avoid. Scripture says, Prema Maitri Kripa Peksha, those who are envious, those who are blasphemous, we should avoid them. But at the same time, we should also understand that the unfavorable people, like if somebody is constantly criticizing Krishna or because of a certain background, that unfortunate what we say, some people like, you know, the Jain friends of yours, that unfortunate word is subjective. See, what is unfavorable for, what is unfortunate for some, see, it is depending on the material, external, subjective situation. Like in America, for example, there was a time when, even now, America and Russia are kind of enemies. So, during Cold War also, it was seen, America, American, if an American preached to a uh, Russian, Russian will never become devotee. Or if a Russian preaches to American, he will not become devotee. So, when American preaches to an American, then there is a good chance he will become a devotee. Because he is at least favorable. He will be favorable. He will be listening. So, it is preaching, preachers, intelligence he has to use to give Krishna consciousness. Preacher has to approach out of compassion. So, some, we many times you know, people are envious, they are muda, they don't accept Krishna consciousness. That way we absolve ourselves of the responsibility of making people fortunate. We should not do that. In fact, whatever people we see who are envious of Krishna, that is because of mutual body incompatibility. There is incompatibility because of material consideration. So, somebody else who is of that same criteria, same category should go and preach to him. Like people generally feel envious because of bodily consideration. Somebody is of the same background, same Jain background, goes to him and preaches to him. Then there is a good chance he will listen. So just let us not bracket people as, oh, they will not become devotees. We don't know. It is our responsibilities. We were given mercy by devotees. Because of them, we became, we got Krishna consciousness. So we have to give also Krishna consciousness. So. So therefore, see, before we were preached, we were also envious of Krishna. All of us are envious of Krishna only. So that envy is not eternal. So when those who are criticizing Krishna from the background that you are talking about, they are not eternally going to be envious of Krishna. It is just that they don't know the right thing. They have been taught the wrong thing from childhood. So it has to go, that envy has to go out of the system of their, their system. And how will that go away? It is generally because of material, external things that they have learned. Like I gave the example of Tamil Nadu. When I was in Tamil Nadu, I couldn't speak in Hindi. Because they consider Tamil as India's national language. And English as second language of India. <laughs> and Hindi as worse, last. <laughs> so such person, must, somebody go and does Baba Sattva in Hindi, you will not be able to make devotees. You have to, you have to preach. They are fanatics. Sometimes they will be fanatics. So therefore, uh, you have to um, so, you know, if you go to Tamil Nadu, they think everything above Tamil Nadu is North India. Maharashtra is North India. Odisha is North India. <laughs> so, you, you can't, you know, so they are language fanatics, many of them, in Tamil Nadu. So, they will become Dveshis if you go and tell them, you know, Hindi may, if you start glorifying and then you say Hindi, Hindi is. So, basically, what, what I'm trying to say is such people, Tamil people should go and preach to them in Tamil language. It helps. 
Similarly, those who are Jain background and they are criticizing Krishna, you should send a Jain devotee to them to preach. Means you should not preach to him or her. Somebody else should. But basically the idea is you to give him Krishna. Srila Prabhupada writes in that same purport, the second verse, that why we have temples, he says. Because people can come, they can bow down to Krishna, and when they bow down, then we can give them Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada, you know, basically Prabhupada's philosophy is Ena Kena Prakare Ena, Samo or the other, Mana Krishna Nibeshe, Samo give Krishna to people. So, yes, most important thing is we have to give Krishna to devote people and make them devotees. And that will remove the curtain. Remember the verse mm-hmm. Maya Javani Kachana, that curtain is there, curtain of Maya, because of which Muda, unfortunate people are unable to see Krishna. So what should we do? Should we keep lamenting? Oh, unfortunate people cannot see Krishna. We have to help remove that curtain and make everyone fortunate, make everyone come towards Krishna. That is our responsibility. And why we have these Bhagavatam classes, morning temple or here? Because since the way we study scripture, we understand that we have to preach. We understand that people are not accepting Krishna because they are unfortunate. We understand that there is a curtain of Maya. We understand that we have to remove the curtain of Maya. All this is happening because of scriptures, right? Bhagavatam. So when we hear Bhagavatam, when we share Bhagavatam, then not only the curtain of Maya will be removed, but also this discussion will ensure that the next generation will also get Bhagavatam. Because some of you are young here, or some of you will go home and share it with children. Basically, we are giving a message to the universe that we are continuing the tradition. The 10th kind of Bhagavatam gives a beautiful example of grass covering the path. In villages, those of you who have gone to villages or lived in villages, you will see that in the fields, uh, a path is created, walking path is created in the fields, and all, you know, there will be grass everywhere, but a certain section, because of people constantly walking there, same path, a path is automatically made. Have you ever seen something like that? So it is not actually a properly made road. That road has been created by people constantly walking there. Hmm? So what happens then? Rainy seasons come. It starts raining. A lot of grass starts growing and people stop walking there. And then after some time when you come and see, you will see grass everywhere. And then you can't recognize the path. It has happened. And then when you can't recognize the path, even if someone wants to walk on that, you will be scared. Why? He'll think maybe there is a snake. Maybe there are scorpions. So the 10th kind of Bhagavatam gives this example to say that when we are constantly hearing scriptures and having Bhagavatam classes like this, the path to back to Godhead is created. And we are walking on that path. And we are telling people, this is the path. You know, this is the curtain of Maya covering you. Come on, get out. So like that. Although you may have you may be feeling helpless in your inability to convince your Jain friends. But because you are walking on the path, the path is on. They will also come one day. Path is on. But what happens many times, uh, if we don't study scriptures like this and don't understand that we are responsible, we have to preach or there is a curtain of mind, then because of not studying, the path gets covered with grasses of misunderstanding, wrong conclusions. And then the right path is not seen also. And some day, some people will come and they will want the next generation. They may be interested also in Bhagavatam, but they will not, they'll be scared to walk that path. Padani kya hai, koi grandmother ka studi hai, kisne bula hai. So they, they, their confidence only will not be there. So we should not allow these grasses of misunderstanding and wrong conclusions to come. That's why it's important to understand bhakti is not dependent on material situation. This is constantly we have to keep remembering and reminding to different classes. So we have to keep walking on the path of scriptures so that the path is clear to go back to God. So therefore, this is a very, very important verse that people are unfortunate because of the curtain of mind. The purport, it's a long purport, I'm not reading the whole purport, but Srila Prabhupada gives examples of different incarnations, Lord Ram, Narsimha Vara, and he gives examples of Krishna performed amazing pastime as a small baby, he killed Putana, he lifted Govardhan, all these things Prabhupada says, and still not everybody accepts him as God. 
So this is because of their unfortunate condition. So therefore, Shila Prabhupada says, even when he was personally present, people could not recognize Krishna. So then Shila Prabhupada says, it is because, as I said in the beginning of today's class, it is because of their imperfect senses. They are trying to understand Krishna through Pratyaksha and Anumana Praman. And therefore, what we need is Shatta Praman. We need to help people come closer to Krishna. Then Prabhupada concludes the purport by saying, that's where we make temples. So that people come, they get an experience, they go down to the Lord. You are saying something? I will ask if you are done. Yes. Guruji, the, the Gopas who were with Krishna, they also did not consider him as, as, as a god. So, Unta, what do we think about, what do we understand about them? They don't understand Krishna as God out of pure love. We don't, we don't accept Krishna as God out of pure envy. There is a big difference. When they don't, when they say Krishna is not God, it is because they love Krishna so much that they are experiencing such sweetness that their understanding of Krishna as God is covered. We are envious so much of Krishna that our, under, our understanding is covered. See, Uddhava, this is a problem, you know Uddhava, right? Krishna's most trusted minister. In fact, Uddhava was so good is is disciple of Brahaspati. And Krishna used to sometimes consult him. Uddhava, kya <laughs> well, he was so qualified. And Uddhava thought, I am the best devotee of Krishna. Because I'm, Krishna yeah. consults me and I'm, nobody loves Krishna yeah. more than me. So Krishna wanted Uddhava to become humble. So Krishna told Uddhava, why don't you go to Vrindavan and give this message to the gopis? So Uddhava came to Vrindavan to console Nanda Baba, Ishoda, to meet them. And he thought, you know, they are all uneducated, simple people. I will tell them how oh, Krishna is God. But Uddhava knew Krishna is the Supreme Lord. They will understand. So then he came. He met Nanda Baba and Ishoda, Mother, Mother Ishoda. And he said, so they immediately asked, how is our Krishna doing? Is Krishna okay? Is he eating on time? Is he eating? So then <laughs> Uddhava started thinking, oh, they are still thinking Krishna is a small child. So Uddhava said, let me educate them. He said, oh, Mother Yashoda, oh, Nanda Baba, don't worry, you know who is Krishna? He is the supreme personality of Godhead. You should be proud of him. And you know what? You are just worrying whether he is eaten or not and all that. He has defeated Jarasandha 17 times and he has killed so many wicked Rakshasas like Shishupal. Such extraordinary feats he has performed. So he is explaining all this to Nanda Baba and Mother Yashoda. So they are listening to him and immediately they say, Oh, but he must be very tired. No, it is not good for him. So Uddhava is like, oh, What are they saying? He is not able to understand. The psychology of Nanda Baba and Nanda Rishwad, they are saying, no, but so much activity from morning to night. Does he get time to eat? Is he taking proper rest? They, they are thinking in terms of Krishna's well-being. They are not considering, they are not thinking of Krishna in terms of his Godhood. That much prema, that much love, that Jnana is covered. So Uddhava is called as Jnana Mishra Bhakta. His, his love for Krishna is mixed with knowledge that Krishna is God. And Brajavasis, their love is called Jnana Shunya Bhakta, Bhakti. Means knowledge is covered that much Bhakti, the highest Bhakti, which is called Kevala Bhakti. Kevala Bhakti means there is no knowledge only that he is God. Itna pyar ho gaya. So then, then Nara Uddha says, No, 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 Mother Rishwada, I think you're not getting my point. See, try to understand. He makes them see. I understand your feeling. So because Uddhava is knowledgeable, Uddhava immediately starts calculating and analyzing. Says, oh, right now, Nanda Baba and Mother Ashoda, they are what their feeling is coming in the bhava, the symptoms hai, usab, alag, alag, ecstasy. You know all the ecstasy faces. This is a uh, Vatsalya bhava. So Nanda Baba and Mother Ashoda are feeling Vatsalya bhava. So that's why they are feeling, you know, that Krishna should eat food on time, he should be healthy. So let me um, let me let me explain to them. They'll understand. 
this is mother ashoda way to agree see what you are feeling is affection which is very good but please understand krishna is supreme personality of god it do you know all the incarnations come from him he is the creator of the whole material cosmos so they are listening to him attentively and after he finishes after uddhava finishes his discourse he thinks i have convinced them now and they are like listening after he finishes then both nanda and ashoda look at each other and nanda maharaj tells uddhava who oh, uddhava we thought you are a very intelligent person we had heard that you are disciple of brahmaspati but uh, you lack common sense see we have heard that god is uh, narayan narayan means one who shelter of all living entities but we are shelter of krishna so how can krishna be god and we also have studied scriptures in scriptures it is said that god is aptakam is completely self satisfied but our krishna is greedy for butter how can he be god so like that they start giving one argument after another proving that uddhava is wrong and uddhava is racking his brains <laughs> he is not able to understand ye kya logic hai kya pyar hai so uddhava went to vrindavan wearing a hat big hat you know this british people used to wear lords the proper says in one lecture you know like us zamane mein na the british lords used to have a big hat seen in the old movie in english so nar it is said that uddhava went to vrindavan with wearing a big hat of gyan knowledge ka hat pen to wear and then he saw the brijwasis love for krishna especially the gopis how much they love krishna when he saw are they are love so much so much are itna itna jada hai itna jada hai and then his hat fell off <laughs> means he realized that his gyana is incapable of revealing to him the love and the glory of uh krishna so then he saw nanda maharaj and ashoda are crying they are saying why doesn't krishna come to vrindavan we are missing him when will he come so they are not focusing on what uddhava is saying about krishna being god rather they are focusing on being separated from krishna so uddhava is trying to give gyana and trying to convince them that krishna is god and they are trying to convince uddhava that krishna should be here so that conversation is going nowhere for a meaningful conversation both should understand each other they are not able to understand each other but one point of uddhava gets special mercy of krishna and he understands oh okay 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 i understand that i don't understand krishna <laughs> and these people because nanda and mother should start crying loudly oh why didn't krishna come and he is looking at and then he gets a realization that okay when people are crying generally we console them don't cry everything will be all right you know sab dukh chala jayega hum bolte hain na guzar jayega ye daur bhi gale zara itnaan to rakh jab khushi na thehri to gham ki kya hoga to khushi ne thehta to gham kya to hum aise console karte ro mat ro mat to then udas said but they are crying for krishna they are constantly saying krishna krishna when will you come So then Uddhava says, uh, "Should I tell them not to cry?" <laughs> Uddhava gets confused. Uddhava says, "No, this crying is the goal, the highest goal of life." So he says, "Cry, cry more for Krishna." And why I am not able to cry like that? So he gets confused. So all of Vrindavan is like that. And when he meets the gopis, and that's when he realizes that this love I am not able to experience because I am filled with kyan. and to experience what they are experiencing my knowledge is not sufficient i need something more than knowledge then he gets the realization of the pole star so generally there is everything is dark to remove that darkness what we need light so right now our ignorance of krishna is compared to darkness we don't know krishna we are in ignorance which is like dark darkness so we need knowledge which is like sun so when the knowledge sun of when the knowledge like sun sorry when sun like or knowledge like sun comes knowledge comes 
then our ignorance goes. Then we understand Krishna and God. Right? Then we may love Krishna. So, light removes darkness. And when there is light, we can see things clearly. So, when there is knowledge, we can see Krishna is God. We can understand everything. And Uddhava says, I also have knowledge. All my ignorance is gone. And all the darkness is gone. And I have the light of knowledge. I can see Krishna. I can understand Krishna is God. But there are some things you cannot see when there is light. Only when the sunlight goes away, you can see that. And that is pole star. If you want to see the pole star, then this knowledge is useless. Obviously, this light is useless. So when the sun goes away and the sky is enveloped with darkness, then you can see that pole star. So Uddhava realizes, I have so much knowledge about Krishna, but with this knowledge, all my confusion and ignorance is gone. I understand Krishna is God, but this love which gopis are experiencing, Brajvas are experiencing, this is the love which is like the pole star. To realize and see this love, my knowledge, my sunlight is useless. <laughs> so Uddhava goes back very humbled. He had come to Vrindavan thinking he is a great pandit, great scholar. And then he says, he wants to take the dust from the gopis, lotus feet, but he feels they will feel very embarrassed and shy because I am such a big minister. They will never give that. So he prays to become a gulmalatha, a small grass, blade of grass on the outskirts of Vrindavan. So that the gopis can trample upon him and enter Vrindavan. So that the dust from their lotus feet goes on his head. Why did you get into all of this? Because I am understanding of God. The Jivasis don't understand Krishna is God. They understand, they just disregard Yeah, so basically, you got the answer. So you asked the question that we are saying atheistic people don't understand God. We are saying go, go. Rajasis also don't accept Krishna as God. But the reason is different. There is a different reason. Why they don't accept Krishna as God, there is a different reason. They say, uh, Vishnu, when, when they are presented with evidence, see, Krishna killed so many demons. Oh, Vishnu must have entered him and killed. Oh. Our Krishna cannot kill. So then once Rama, once uh, Krishna told, uh, when they had some fight, Krishna had fight with his friends, Sri Rama, Stoka Krishna, Subal, they were all there. So then Krishna said, hey, you don't know, I killed Putana when I was a baby. And I lifted Govardhan. And I killed Agasur. So that Shalama says, wait, wait, wait. Actually, when Krishna kills some demon, sometimes these boys get confused. Hey, who is it? I'm not Krishna. Hai so then they say, come, come here, Krishna. Then they wrestle with him to see. And then they defeat Krishna. And then they are, he can normal. <laughs> so because they can't accept Krishna as God. So when one day, once one, they had an argument, Krishna claimed that I have killed the Agasur, I have killed Putana, I have done this. So then all the boys dismiss. They say, see, don't show up. We know what really happened. See, Agasur, no, we only first entered his mouth. We only had killed him. And Govardhan, see, Putana, see, Putana got killed, not because you killed her, okay? Nanda Baba and your mother, Mother Ishoda, they are chanting so many mantras for your protection. Because of that, Putana got killed. And Govardhan, see, we are always performing so many pujas for Govardhan. Govardhan is in ecstasy. So, when Indra was showering that rain, Govardhan out of ecstasy went to the sky, floated, and you just put your pinky finger and you are taking the credit for it. So, like that, they were making fun of, they just couldn't believe that Krishna did it. Sometimes in the discussions in Vrindavan, the elderly people, they would discuss, is so many things Krishna is doing? Sometimes they, called, they would call emergency meeting, and there would be agenda item to discuss the Krishna corner. Mm -hmm. And the end of the meeting, the minutes passed is, uh, Krishna is our boy, he is a normal boy, he is not God. That is the conclusion they would come to after all the discussions. So Rupa Goswami gives the example that you now sometimes when you are boiling milk, a blade of grass may fall when you are boiling milk in an open space. And that blade of grass may appear to be floating on the surface for a few seconds, then it goes down again. They say similarly, sometimes by discussion, somebody may just say that, oh, Krishna is Supreme Lord. He is doing some amazing things. And then immediately that thought will go away. It doesn't, it is not, it is not permanent thought. It is just like a passing remark. And Krishna being God, 
it's like a rumor there sometimes like somebody somebody may sa upar se koi bol dega but it is immediately dismissed it is never taken seriously so they are they don't they, they don't understand krishna is god we also don't understand krishna is god but the difference is very very big that is out of pure love kevala bhakti so therefore we can artificially go there we have to first understand krishna is god is that okay So you are saying the ten offenses we said do not preach to faithless person. So and we are saying here today that preach. So it is like this. First we don't know who is faithless, who is envious. We don't know. So first you are pardoned. You can go and tell anyone and everyone. But once you preach, then you understand. क्या रहे तो बोल प्लेकाली दे रहा है. Then you don't go to him. And then the second way of understanding is that nobody is permanently or always envious. You send somebody else who can preach to that person. You don't do it yourself. Who psychology? Who wavelength? Wala, you know. I know somebody who was very very attached to cricket and he didn't like Hare Krishnas. So there was another devotee who was very fond of cricket. So that devotee would go to him and play cricket with him and then preach to him and eventually he is now a devotee. He is a brahmachari and doing lot of seva in our temple. And is nothing to do with cricket now, but he came to Krishna consciousness because the devotee preached to him was playing cricket with him. So the point is, initially we don't know who is envious, who is. And one more thing I want to tell you regarding preaching: now don't be attached to results. That you give Krishna to everyone, the journey has begun. There is wet grass, there is moist grass, and there is dry grass. If you put fire on wet grass, does it catch fire? But something good happens. What happens? The grass becomes moist. If you put fire on moist grass, does it catch fire? It just becomes dry. But if you put fire on dry grass, does it catch fire? Yes. So when you are preaching, some people are like wet grass. They will not become devotees to your vision in your lifetime. But they will become wet. Uh, dry, uh, moist. Some people you are preaching to, they are moist. You give them Krishna consciousness. I am saying, I am putting so much water on the table. What is he doing? And don't worry, he is drying. You have put fire on it. But after that, in the next lifetime, or after some years, somebody will go and tell him something about Krishna. He immediately becomes devotee. And you are wondering, what is devotee? How did he become devotee? And you will be like, I wondered so many times in the initial years. कैसे हो रहा है डिवोटी इसको इतना प्रीचिंग है डिवोटी नहीं बन सो आई अंडरस्टूड दैट सबका अपना अपना एक जर्नी है एंड बट कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस इफेक्ट्स सी आई वाज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग बुक्स फॉर मेनी इयर्स आई गॉट मी रियलाइज मेनी टाइम्स आई गॉट रियलाइज आई हैव टू गो फ्रॉम ग्रैंड रोड टू बोरीवली टेक टू बैग्स फुल ऑफ बुक्स सो आई हैव टू गो एट 2:30 2:15 कम बैक बाय 5:15 लोकल ट्रेन में जाने का अनाउंस करने का देन नेक्स्ट उतरने का नेक्स्ट डब्बे में जाने का लाइक दोस कोम सेलर्स आई डोंट नो इफ द सिस्टम इज स्टिल देयर I used to do that 20 years ago, and then I made a lot of friends with the beggars, and they used to think I'm also doing nice business. <laughs> they used to say, "Maharaj, what is your dhanaka? What is your dhanaka?" So I used to make announcements, and sometimes I used to exchange chutta with them. They had good friends. So why I'm saying this? So while distributing books, I've seen some bags. Some person we are convincing him for 20 minutes, or a little, little, and he listens for a long time, discusses with the different things. And one day I was just sitting in the bench in Jogeshwari. You know, the station is on both sides. Platform comes on both sides. So in one side I was sitting, third guy. And one person came to me, patted me on the back. I looked at him. I said, "Does Bhagavad Gita do?" And I had exact ten Bhagavad Gita. I gave him. Kuch preaching nahi, kuch nahi. And then I realized what happened. There was one man I preached to him for half an hour. He didn't take the book. And this man, then I understood. Oh, there is a big master plan going on. There is a big journey going on. So when this man came to me and patted me on the shoulder and took ten books, that means since last many years or many lifetimes, people are telling him about Krishna, and he kept refusing, refusing, no, 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 no. Then one day he must have said, "Okay, I'll take it." For us, I'll take it. As a obvious journey, many people must have approached him, and then finally, when he was absolutely ready, he saw me. So I was one part of that big plan. 
and when i told this person for half an hour take the book he didn't take the book i should be happy that i'm still part of the plan because tomorrow somebody else will go and tell him see when you know in the door when the door is locked one day it happened in our ashram the door was locked from inside we were all trying to break it open it it was not opening so all the tough and fat and strong brahmacharis we all pushed it hard and did too tiny and we all got tired and we sat down then the thinnest brahmacharya of our temple came he just touched it it collapsed <laughs> so what does that mean to wo itna pehlwan hai usne kar diya he just was the last straw that broke the camel's back we did all the effort then he came to street oh yeah similarly when i was the preaching man sometimes you tell someone and immediately become devotees means so many people must have preached to me in the past and if you are preaching and nobody is becoming a devotee that means still you are part of the plan there is nothing to be proud of there is nothing to lament in preaching because they spend millions of dollars on advertisement you know i used to come from haji ali i used to see the now also i see sometimes raymond's ad who oh, yeah. are coca cola enjoy coca cola when that ad is seen it shows that you will be clear ad and go and buy coca cola keep getting bombarded with that ad and then one day it enters your subconscious mind and it influences your decision right so when devotees you go out we are giving krishna consciousness it is creating an impact lot of cyclone comes winds come i have seen last year also during rainy season there i go to agosh kanti maidan many times to walk after the rains everything is cool there are some trees that withstand all the cyclone and winds and after the rains have subsided and everything is quiet and a crow comes and sits on that branch and the branch falls similarly who makes a person devotee how that happens we shouldn't really be very to enter now you are talking about preaching to faithless person it has an effect so we should not give up hope So how we can, how we can understand how Agnya should be like? Is it like anybody approach a new person? So whatever that small small credit. Yeah, devotion credit. I know it's not pious credit. Serving a devotee is. You can't say, "I have, I 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 but devotee always understands i have become a devotee not because i have done so many good things that may be technically true but we know that it is a bhakta's intervention that has made me a devotee so it is my responsibility to also intervene in other people's lives and help them come closer to krishna sir one of the examples some devotee was sharing saying that once bhakti rasamrit maharaj was traveling and it's very outskirt areas So suddenly they were filling up the petrol, and Maharaj came out. And Maharaj's personal servant was also there. So Maharaj gave his chadar not to the personal servant, but to one of the guys who was working there. So he gave, and then Maharaj said, "This won't cost any time." After that, then they sat in the car and they sat. Servant was a bit confused, like personal servant or not. Like Maharaj, I was there only for a bit. Then in this area, who will come? Which devotee will come to do something? So I just want to give that. Yeah, so that is some emotional crazy. Somewhere you start to do it. Somewhere you start to do it. That is preaching, giving an opportunity to people to serve. That's why Shri Prabhupada started life membership program. So many programs to engage people in service. So like this, uh, Kunti is prayers. So Kunti, as in the first two prayers, said that Krishna is the supreme Lord, but he cannot be known because he's an expert actor, and he's covered, and foolish people cannot know him. then who can know him so that is revealed in the next verse text number 20 please repeat after me tata paramahansa naam tata paramahansa naam vina mamalaatmana vina pada bhakti yoga vidhanartham bhakti yoga vidhanartham katam pashye mahistriya katam pashye mahistriya You'll read translation. Yeah, I'm sure. You yourself descend to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service to the hearts of the advanced transcendentalists. 
and mental speculators who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit. How then can we women know you perfectly? This is a beautiful verse. She is saying, who can know Krishna first? She is saying, Tata Paramahamsa Naam. Pure devotees, great souls can know you. Why? Unnam, Amala, Atmanam. They are free of all contamination. And then she is saying, and they know you because of Bhakti Yoga. They remember you, they serve you. Bhakti Yoga Vidhanatam. And then she says, but how can I understand you? Because I am after all a simple woman. Katam Pashema Histriya. But she is living with Krishna. In the sense, she is with Krishna. And she is saying, I cannot understand Krishna. Now, this is inconceivable. But how can somebody who is with Krishna and who is glorifying Krishna in such choice poetry say that I cannot know you because you know, I am after all a simple woman. How do I know you? So, in this verse, she is revealing how we can know Krishna. She is saying we can know Krishna by what? Bhakti Yoga Vidhanartam. We can know Krishna by Bhakti Yoga. And therefore, she says only great souls can understand Krishna. That she has revealed. What is the verse? What is the first line of the verse? Tata Paramahansa Naam. Great devotees can understand Krishna. Great philosophers can understand Krishna. Muni Naam, Amala Atma Naam. The spotless character. Right? They can know Krishna. And what is the process? Bhakti Yoga Vidhanatam. So, Krishna can be known through Bhakti Yoga. And here the last line is an amazing surprise. She says, but then how can I know? <laughs> Katam Pashyam, I am after all a simple woman. Now this here, very, very important. Out of her great humility, she is identifying herself as a simple, ignorant woman who doesn't know. Now great souls always identify some shortcoming within themselves. That is their that is the hallmark of a devotee. The devotee will never say that you know, I am the most intelligent. So, a low class person will always see that I am the best and he will always be in the bodily concept. Now, this bodily identification that I am smart, I am an intelligent person, this kind of bodily identification is not there in Kunti. Therefore, out of humility, she is saying that I cannot know you because I am after all a woman. So does that mean a woman cannot know Krishna? So Srila Prabhupada says, if you think you are a woman and you have a bodily identification that I am a woman, then that is when, when Kuntide is saying, I am a less intelligent woman, Prabhupada said, you are less intelligent, less intelligent if you identify yourself in the bodily consciousness that I am a woman. Because Krishna himself has said, Everyone can understand me, even Striyo, Vaishya, Shata, Shudra. So there is no bodily restriction. That means anybody can know Krishna. Anybody can understand Krishna. But Kunti Devi is contradicting by saying, I cannot know you because I am after all a less intelligent woman. So scriptures are saying, women, Brahmanas, Shudra, Vaishya, all can understand Krishna without restriction. But Kunti says, I cannot understand you because I am a simple woman. Basically, she is contradicting scriptures. Now, it seems that Kunti Devi is ignorant of scriptural injunctions which say that anybody can know Krishna. Maybe she didn't hear Bhagavad Gita Krishna spoke few days ago. So, therefore, we have to see when pure devotees speak, na, out of humility, they sing prayers, there may be something contradictory. We have to know that, or you may see pure devotees' behavior, it may appear externally like a materialistic person's behavior only. But we should, we should know that what is born out of pure love may sometimes appear externally to be like that which is born out of the influence of three modes. Externally, the behavior may appear same, but the motivation or the trigger is not the same. When Kuntidir is saying that, you know, I cannot understand you, she is displaying one quality of pure love. There are some nine symptoms in Bhava stage. One of them is Mana Shunyata. Complete freedom from pride. So it is in that symptom that she is revealing that I cannot know you. Like the greatest author of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, Kaviraj Goswami, he writes in Chaitanya Charitamrita, 
You can repeat this verse after me. Jagai madai hoite. Mui se papishta. Mui se papishta. Puri shera kita hoite. Puri shera kita hoite. Mui se la gishta. Mui se la gishta. So Kaviraj Goswami is saying, I am worse than Jagai and Madai. Jagai Madai Hoite Mui Sepa Pishta. I am more sinful than Jagai. Jagai Madai were very big dacoits, very big gundas. They did all kinds of sinful activity, including burning houses, murdering people, raping women. And Kaviraj Goswami is the greatest devotee of Lord Nityananda. And because Jagai Madai eventually became devotees, they got transformed. But out of his humility, Kaviraj Goswami says, I am more sinful than Jagai and Madai. This is not evidence by the right, but this is a feeling, mood of humility. And then he's saying the next line is, Puri Shera Kita Hoite Muni Sela Agishta. You know, if you are infected and you pass stool, sometimes that may be a worm if you are diseased condition. So he says, I'm worse than a worm that is found in human excreta. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> this kind of humility can't be fake. And you can't imitate this. So this is a level at which he is thinking. So this is not shastrically true. He is not more simple than Jagai Madai. So therefore, uh, you can never imagine Kaviraj Goswami like that. So, Actually, if you see materially, logically, what Kaviraj Goswami is saying is complete blatant lie. But we know that it is out of pure love. So external activities you cannot go by, especially the prayers. The, the, the like gopis are having amorous pastimes with Krishna. They are dancing, singing with Krishna, but the internal trigger of lust is not there. An ordinary man may be dancing with a girl, but the trigger may be lust. There is a difference between the trigger for a materialistic person and for a pure devotee. Like in Damodar Leela, we see a very interesting pastime. You know, gopis are complaining to Krishna, Mother Yashoda, that Krishna is always stealing butter. So what Mother Yashoda does? She says, enough is enough. I will get the best milk from the Padmaganda house. And this whole pastime, she is thinking that I will churn the butter myself and make best butter from the Padmaganda cows, then Krishna will eat it and Krishna will never have to go anywhere else for stealing butter. And this will be the best butter that I will make. And generally the maid servants of Yashoda would be churning and they would be doing. So, so Mother Yashoda has that described in the Bhagavatam, she is saying, what this may gopis know about pleasing my Krishna? I can perfectly please Krishna. Now, from external point of view, if you see, it appears as if she is proud. As if you know, I am better than all the other gopis. Right? That's a lagra. But you have to understand the mood here. See, this pride, you know, this is called sthai bhava. Sthai bhava means sthai. It is a it is a transient emotion which is born out of prema, out of love for Krishna. Sometimes you know, out of pride. So, so that pride is not permanent feature of Mother Ishuda. It is a temporary emotion out of love for Krishna. That I am, I will make best butter for Krishna. That is Thai Bhava. Like sometimes, you know, parents to protect the child, just to protect the child, for the child's welfare, sometimes the parent may chastise the child, right? They may heavily scold the child. But that is, that is considered as transient. It is not like a permanent emotion, you know? It is called as Sanchari Bhava, which is basically born out of natural affection for the child. So good parents will always scold the child when the child does wrong, out of affection. But sorry, I was saying Sthai, sthai Bhava is like permanent, Sthai, still. Sanchari Bhava is, which is transient. Kabhi upaya, alag alag, alag 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 bhava. So Mother Yashoda feeling proud is a Sanchari Bhava, it's just coming and going. The problem is if parents are scolding the child always. <laughs> if Sanchari Bhava becomes Thai Bhava, then the child will run away. So these transient emotions in pure devotees may it may appear externally as if the three modes are acting. Like you know, you may you may say I'm useless, I'm fallen out of because you're depressed. 
you may need a psychiatrist. But a pure devotee is saying, I am, you know, worthless, I am less intelligent. That is out of pure love and manashunita. So here Kunti Devi is making a statement which is not shastrically correct. First statement is right. She is saying only pure devotees can know you. That is right. But then she then she says, I am a woman, so I cannot know you. Ah, that is wrong. That is not shastrically correct. Getting it? But that shastrically wrong statement she is making, that is not because she is ignorant. That is because she is feeling great love for Krishna and one of the manifestations, one of the nine symptoms of bhava, love for Krishna, this is called Anubhava. There are many symptoms. One is Manashunita, freedom from pride. One is Utkanta, great eagerness. One is Avyarta Kalatvam, not wasting any time. These are all symptoms of one who is having deep love for Krishna. Asha Baddha means having a lot of hope in Krishna consciousness. Namangane Sadaruchi, always wanting to hear and chant Krishna's holy names. Priti Sadvasati Istale, wanting to go to holy places. All these are symptoms of somebody who loves Krishna. And one of the symptoms is to consider oneself as, uh, you know, not qualified. So in that mood, she is saying, I am helpless woman, I am less intelligent. So, so therefore, this is the way we see. And uh, she is saying, your test mother, you want to say something? Humility only, that's what we are saying. Mana Shunita is humility, freedom from pride. So, like this, she is saying we will continue next time. We will take the purport in more detail. So, we have completed today two verses we have taken 19 and 20. So, we will continue the discussion next time. I will pause here. Next Tuesday, also, I am here. So, we can take class. So, thank you very much. Tantra Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Shri Prabhupada ki, thank you very much, Hare Krishna.